Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is part three in my series talking about my sewing machines. And today I'm going to be talking about my brother 1034D serger, also called an overlocker. In this video, I'm going to talk about what a serger is, when to use it, when I use it, and a little bit about this serger in particular. Let's get started. So let's start off with what is a serger, also called an overlocker. So a serger is a machine that uses three or four threads to create a looped stitch on the edge of the fabric. If you use two needles in the machine, you'll use four threads. And if you use one needle, you will use three. Most of the time I use two needles and four threads. And that creates a really classic, secure, professional looking overlock stitch. These machines also have a knife. It's right in here. And as you stitch, if the knife is on, it'll cut away the excess fabric. So you can stitch a seam finish the edge and trim away the excess seam allowance all in one go. So a searcher does a variety of stitches, but I really only use it for two purposes. First, I use it to finish seams either for woven fabric or for knit fabric. And second, I use it to sew seams and finish them in one step when sewing knit garments. My approach to using a serger might be a little bit different than most people. So at the end of the video, I'm going to share my approach, my techniques, and my tips for how to use a serger. So let's get to know this guy. This is the Brother 1034D. It's a very popular machine. I think it's probably the one most people in the sewing community have. And that's for a few reasons. One, it's really accessible. I bought this on Amazon. It's really affordable too. I paid $229 back in 2009. And it's really dependable. I've had it since 2009, 13 years, and it still works great. I have never even had it serviced. I probably should have it serviced, but it's still working really well. So I'm just gonna keep going and keep using it. So I think that this is a really accessible machine. Um, I think it's pretty easy to thread and adjust the tension. And I actually have a couple of videos about those two topics. I will put links to those down in the show notes. Um, I should say that they are some of the first videos that I made on YouTube. So it was really back when I was still learning techniques for how to record and edit. So they're probably not the best quality, but I think the content is still probably good. So the way that I use a serger is maybe a little bit different than other people. So I think a lot of people will stitch their seams and then finish those raw edges together using the serger with the knife on and cut away any excess. I do it the opposite way and I finish my seams before stitching the seams as much as possible. And I learned this in a costume design and construction class in college. And this way you're going to prevent any fraying during construction and you're going to make it easier to make any alterations later. Plus you're going to preserve all of the seam allowance. So again, if you have to make alterations, you're going to have more to work with. There are a few times when I will finish the seams together after I've sewn them. Like when sewing a gathered waist skirt, I like to do that to reduce bulk. But for the most part, I will finish as many seams as possible on my serger before I start stitching. So if you bought any of my patterns, I recommend do doing that in my patterns. I know not everyone is a fan, but I have really um, loved this approach to finishing my seams. So I will also use my serger to stitch seams in knit garments for the seams that do not have a lot of stress on them. I have found that the lightning stitch on a regular machine is much more secure than the stitches on a serger. 
meaning when you pull apart the fabric and you put more stress on the fabric, um, it's gonna pull apart more with a serger than with a lightning stitch. The only issue with the lightning stitch is that it's really, really hard to unpick. So you wanna make sure that you like the fit before you stitch it. But if you're sewing something like leggings that's gonna have a lot of stress put on that seam, I do recommend using a lightning stitch for those seams instead of the serger, just cause it's gonna be more secure and less prone to ripping open. So if you do decide to add a serger to your collection of sewing machines, I have three tips for you. The first tip is to practice. When I first used these, again, in that college course, I was really scared. I had never used a machine like this. And the fact that there's a knife, there's something cutting it, cutting your fabric as you're stitching can be really intimidating. So I just really recommend practicing, using some scraps, just go slow and get comfortable. The same goes for threading the machine. I have practiced it and gotten to know it. Again, watch my video about threading the machine and it takes me about three minutes. Um, it's not too long, I don't love doing it, but it's only three minutes. And I know a lot of people are intimidated by threading sergers and I think maybe some other machines are more challenging to thread. Um, but I don't find it that hard. I think with practice, you can totally do it. There are machines that are fancier and will auto thread for you. They have like suction that will suck the thread through the machine and just thread it. So if you can afford one of those, I say go for it. Um, I've heard that they're amazing. So tip number two, when I am finishing my seams, again, before I stitch that seam, I will turn off the knife and not cut away any of the seam allowance. On the machine, the knife is right here, so it's really easy to turn it on and off. And I love that feature. I often see people on Instagram who have gone to finish their seams on the serger after sewing them together and then accidentally cut a hole in their garment and it's so sad and I prevent that risk by finishing my seams first and keeping that knife off. Um, again, if you're worried about the knife, you can just turn it off. You don't, I don't use it all the time. I only use it when I am stitching those seams on knit garments. And that leads me in to tip three, and that is when you are getting your garment ready to stitch, pin your pins horizontally to the edge of the fabric. If you have the pins going in perpendicular to the needle, you're gonna risk running over them with that knife and that would be really dangerous. Um, you don't wanna do that, so put the pins in parallel to the raw edge of your fabric and away from the needles, away from the knife, and it's gonna be much safer. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I will have links down in the show notes to the previous two videos in this series and to my videos about using the 1034D. And if you would like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or visit the pattern shop. Links to those are down below too. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well. Happy sewing.